Good morning, my anointed, beloved children of God. We are on day 22 of June 15, 2020. This is day 22. And can you believe that there is one thing that got my attention on the Bible? And is that God created 22 things on day number six back in Genesis, in the book of Genesis. So if you read on day six, he created 22 things. So may you be encouraged just to dive in in the beginning. In the beginning, God created. It's so beautiful. I just want to open that chapter and just read it because there is so much just in that, in that first, first verse that we read of Genesis. It's so powerful. And, uh, and we see the cross right on the word beginning. If you study that word in Hebrew, you will see the cross. You will see that in the beginning, the cross is already there. That's why we say all the time, it's no surprise to God to take us where we are, to give us what we're facing. That's not a surprise. God knows exactly where you are, where you're standing, what are you thinking, how today, Monday is going to be, how your week is going to be. He knows everything. So this is the peace and the shalom that we walk, that we know the God that we serve. The God that is holding the sun right now. The God that is going to hold the moon when the sun brings uh, come on to sunset. So all that assuredness and that awareness and that gratefulness that we live in today on Monday, June 15, day 22 of this fast, is the one that we enter in, into his presence. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for this opportunity. And we are about to read Psalm 30. So if you could go with me, there is Psalm 30. And as a reminder, we are continuing reading this book and uh, on chapter um, 22, which is a day 22. Uh, the title is a Spiritual and Mental Clarity. So I will encourage you to read it, to go along with the fast. And sometimes I don't mention it. But it's, it's, it's very good to have um, resources, even though the Word of God is all the best resources we all go have. But um, this is a book that we're going alone and give us a good insight about the sugar and about um, it takes us to God's Word too. Uh, she sent us to meditate. She's a great author. Um, and she, um, she encouraged um, this sugar fast. Um, I, th I think she does many to the year. I haven't really got the time to really observe um, her fast, but um, just be encouraged that whatever resources God sent you and it opened the door for that, use them for the honor and glory of God. So I hope you're there, Psalm 30, Psalm 30, and um, we're going to read, and when you read the Psalms, read it out loud. Read it, read it with praise, with worship, with all your mighty, with all his power. And read it because it will lift up your spirit. It will lift up your day. And you will carry these words in your heart. So you'll be able to harvest it and plant it and plant a seed to somebody else. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for coming into your word today on day 22 on Psalm 30. Thank you, Jesus. We glorify your name. And he says on verse 1, I will assault you, O Lord, for you lifted me out of the death and did not let my enemies gloat over me. O Lord, my God, I will call you for help and you heal me. O Lord, you brought me up from the grave. You spurred me from going down into the pit. Thank you, Jesus. Sing to the Lord, you saints of his praise. 
his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may remain for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. Oh, Lord, when you favor me, you made my mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face, I dismay. To you, oh, Lord, I call. To the Lord, I cry for mercy. What gain is there in my destruction? Am I going down into the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and the merciful to me. O Lord, be my help. You turn my wheeling into dancing. You remove my sackcloth and clothe me with joy that my heart may sing to you and not to be silent. O oh, Lord, my God, will I give you thanks forever and ever. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. Thank you, Lord, that we could declare this fast. Thank you, Lord, that we could be united, abiding in your word, surrender in your word. Thank you, Lord, that you gave us the opportunity to be here today and shout out your praises and worship your name, the name above every other name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because you are the one we serve. You are the one we serve. Thank you, Lord, because you have chosen us. Thank you, Lord. And you say it. Say it on the other side. Say it out of your mouth. Thank you, Lord, because you have chosen me. Thank you, Lord, because you have favored me. Say it. Say it out loud. I could hear you saying it. Say it. Thank you, Lord, because you have favored me. Thank you, Lord, because you have chosen me. Thank you, Lord, because I am a child of God. I've been redeemed. I've been sanctified. Say it. Proclaim it. Shout it out. Say it. Believe it. Thank you, Jesus. And as we remember um, yesterday, um, we study about being obedient. And the whole Bible teaches about being obedient. And what ultimate picture and story and testimony of Jesus on the cross of his obedience to the Lord, to his Father. But as we studied yesterday about the um, first king, chapter 22, how we need to be obedient to the voice of God. And this is a clear picture right here of obedience. When we uh, open the book of Jonah, and I'm going to give you an, over an overview of the book and its four chapters. And I will encourage you to read it today. And he declared and proclaimed a fast to the city of Nineveh. For 40 days, he was saying, he was saying, if you don't repent, if you don't repent and turn from your wicked ways, an overthrow of this city, the Lord will bring an overthrow of this city. So that's the picture that we're going into. That's the testimony of God that we're going to learn today. And as you uh, open the book of Jonah in chapter 3, let's read right where he declared the um, proclaiming the this fast. Let's go right when he he's already there. And I'll and I'll take you back a little bit of history once we read this together. So on chapter 3 of Jonah, he says. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. A second time. 
This is the second time the word of the Lord came to Jonah and said, Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim it and proclaim to it a message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was very important city. A visit required three days. On the first day, Jonah started into the city. He proclaimed, 40 more days, Nineveh will be overturned. The Nineveh believed God. So they repented. The people of Nineveh believed in what the prophet um, Jonah was saying. And they declared a fast. And all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on a sackcloth. That's why when you read back Psalm 30, you're talking about a sackcloth. This is the sackcloth. This is sackcloth they used to put on as reverence to God, a sackcloth. Back in those days, they used to do that very frequently. You're going to see that a lot in the Bible. So verse 6 says, When the news reached to the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne took off his royal robes, covered himself with what? With sackcloth. And sat down in the dust. Then he issued a proclamation to Nineveh. And this is the decree that he issued to the city of Nineveh. Do not let any man or beast, herd or flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink, but let men and beasts be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows? God may yet relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. So here we have the prophet of, no of Jonah saying to Nineveh, to proclaim a fast, to warn the people, the children of God, to turn from their wicked ways. And he stood there in the city every day, every day, every day. And people, what? People repent. But this is this story did not come that easy to Jonah. So let me remind you back on chapter 1. Everything that he went through in order to get here, it was not easy. But if we look on chapter 1, it says, The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. So Nineveh, so we have a picture in our mind. Nineveh was the capital city of Assyrian Empire. And I think we talked about that before. It was the northern kingdom. Northern kingdom of Israel. So what happened is, at this time, at this moment, Jonah hated Nineveh. He did not want to go to Nineveh. He was a prophet. He had a gift from God, but he didn't want to go there. So what he does, says here, listen to this. The word of the Lord came to him. The word of the Lord. And what did he do? He was disobedient. Verse 3. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarsh Tarshish. So he went to the other side. So imagine if we look at a map, and I wish I could show you a map. Like if I were in the Bible story, I'd be because I'm a very visual student, and so my sisters in Christ too. So imagine a map, and you look at today's Iraq. So Israel and the north part is Iraq. So that's where Nineveh was. Today is Iraq. But you know what he did? He went to Europe, to the other side. That's where Turkish was. He took even a ship through the waters to go because he went the opposite way that God ordained him to go. And how many of us 
find ourselves in that situation. When the law, the, the, the God's word come upon you and you hear his voice and we say, no, 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 Lord, that's not me. No, I'm not going to go there. No, I'm not going to speak to this person. No, I'm not going to be a missionary. No, I'm not going to go to um, that trip or you, you can't, you find all type of excuses. Because you're thinking in the flesh. You're not thinking that God is already ordaining you. God already has a mission for you. And you have to be what? You have to be submissive, surrender to the ways of the Lord. Your mind needs to be transformed to the ways of the Lord. So when we accept Something that God has commanded us, that the, the word of the Lord has come upon you. I pray today that if the Lord is calling you to do something aligned with his word and it's been knocking on your heart, I pray that God soften your heart and that you might not think that you're less or uh, that you're not qualified to it. Because God will ordain you all the qualifications that you need. All of them. Because he's God. So, then what happened is, he, on verse 3, he ran away to Tarkish. Then uh, he went down to Joppa where he found the ship bound for the port. And there he found other sailors that were there. And then these sailors were about to travel, but remember, these sellers served other gods. They were they served pagan gods. So they go into this ship full of cargo and everything. And then what Jonah does, and I'm just giving you an overview. You could read it um today. So that way you get uh submerged with the word of God. And then just like Jonah did in the ocean. So then um he fell to a deep sleep. This reminds me when Jesus was with, uh, with the disciples and he was in the boat and he was uh, in a deep sleep. And then the captain went at him and said, how can you sleep? Get out and call all your God. Maybe he will take a notice of, of, of us. We will not perish because why? The winds were coming. The storm was coming. And remember, they all serve other gods. So they will put, let's say, 10 people on a ship because each person serve a different pagan god. So it was good when they have different people on a ship. So they say, okay, if this is going on, if it's the wind, uh, then you pray for the gods of the wind. If it's a storm, then you pray for the gods of the storm. So that's why they're kind of like attacking um uh, Jonah and saying, come on, you pray to the God that you serve because they throw the lots and the lots was, you know, they believe in all these things and they point, the lots pointed at, at him, at Jonah. So then they knew that he needed to pray for that God. So then he said, but who are you? On verse eight, well, well, um, he said, tell us who is responsible for making all this trouble for us. What did, what did you do? Where did you come from? What is your country? For what people are you? And then he answered. Jonah answered, I am a Hebrew. I am. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. Wow. He said the answer they wanted to hear, the state of the land. So they, they got terrified and they asked, what have you done? They knew they were, ru they were running they knew he was running away from the Lord on verse 10 because he had already told them so. So 11, verse 11, the sea was getting rougher and rougher. So they asked him, what should we do to you to make the sea calm down for us? And then John answered, pick me up and throw me into the sea. He replied, it will become calm. And now that it is my fault that is." that this is the great storm has come upon you. So he took responsibility at this moment and said, it's because of me. It's because of me. So at this moment, the sailors start praying to the Lord, to the Lord of Jonah, and they repented too. 
they got to serve the God that Jonah served. So that, that was a great thing that that happened at that moment on verse 13. And we see it on verse 14 where this, the sailor said, Then they cried to the Lord, Oh Lord, please do not let us die for taking this man's life. Do not hold us accountable for killing an innocent man. For you, O oh Lord, have done as please. See, they repented. The sailors repented to the Lord that Jonah believed. So then on verse 15, they then they took Jonah and threw him overboard. And then the raging sea grew calm. Right away. It, it, right away. The storm went away. The waters were calm. And then... On verse 17, but the Lord provided a great fish and swallowed Jonah and Jonah was inside the fish for three days, three nights. This is very important because this is a picture of Jesus. This is exactly when Jesus died on the cross. He was three, three days and three nights. If we really study a scripture, it's three Days and three nights. It's no Monday through Saturday, through Sunday. This is exactly, and I'm going to show you, and Jesus is going to tell you today that he was three days and three nights. Wake up. Wake up, people. Wake up, my beloved. So then Jonah, on chapter 2, he goes to this big repentance prayer. I'm not going to read it all, but I'm just going to read the first um, verses right there, one and two, it said, In my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From the death of the grave, I called for help. And you listened to my cry. You huddled me into the deep. How many times you and I have felt in our life that we are inside that grave. And we know we're breathing, but we still don't see a light. We still not, don't see the outcome of our circumstances. And we in that grave crying out to the Lord. And we just can't see nothing. But we just there praying and worshiping and praising the Lord. And I want to tell you that, that the God Almighty, the same way he did with Jonah. The same way he did with Jesus. He will resurrect. He will do a revival in your situation because he is a God of mercy. And I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but the word today in the station that we're stopping is mercy. We serve a merciful father. And sometimes take those situations in our life to shake, shake us, shake us internally so we come out of the grave but we come out of the way grave victorious because of Jesus we come out of the grave and out of the cry victorious because of Jesus and then as you read chapter 4 Jonah became angry he became angry at God you know, and as we focus on the first, on the first, he declared a fast the second time on chapter three. He declared a fast. And that's what we're doing. We have declared a fast. And why we have declared a fast? Because we are the interceding for the land. We are, we are interceding for the people that have gone away from God, that have run away from God. And then we see that it wasn't easy. If you read chapter one, it was not easy for Jonah to come to the conclusion to proclaim a fast. It was not easy. He went through all this. And finally, he got to the land and did what God told him to do. And he obeyed to God. But when he obeyed to God and the people in Nineveh, repented and turned from the wicked ways. And you could read, and I will encourage you to read the book of Nahum. It's N-A-H-U-M. And it's a, it's a whole book of the judgment of the city of Nineveh. 
If you never heard that book, it's, it, it's playing the whole description on, on Nineveh. So all these people repented. They were prostitution. They were um, serving other gods. They were all kind of stuff you could read in this book that I just said, Nahum. And you could see this city, how wicked they were. And then when they repented and God had compassion for them and God heard their cry, Jonah was upset on chapter four. He was upset and he prayed to the Lord. Oh Lord, in verse two, is this not what I said when I was still at home? That is why I was so quick to flee to Tarshish. I knew that you were a gracious and compassionate God, a slow to anger and abounding in love. O oh God, who relents from sending calamity. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life. For it is better for me to die than to live. Because he felt that what he had proclaimed that Nineveh was going to be overthrown. It did not happen because God was compassionate with his people. But he forgot that he was obedient to the word of God. So in verse 4, the Lord replied, Have you, have you any right to be angry? Have you have any right to be angry? And then he says it again on verse 9. Do you have a right to be angry about the vine? And he mentions a vine because when uh, Jonah was um, observing that the city was going to be overthrown, he put him a vine. He put him like a, a little shelter. And he created a vine, a tree for him to be sheltered in. And God provided to Jonah, even though Jonah was upset a God. And then he, he answered him again. Do you have a right to be angry about the vine that I created you? And then he answered, the Lord answers on verse 10. But the Lord said, you have been concerned about this vine, though you did not tend it or made it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. But Nineveh, has more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left, and many cattle as well. Should I not be concerned about that great city? So God, the Almighty God, even though we walk through our wicked ways and we run away from Him, He chases us down because He loves us. Us. He's so graceful and has so much mercy that he loves us. And he will send somebody today for you to tell you how much he loves you. And for you to repent from your ways. For you to repent from sin. For you to come to the arms of the Father that created you. So God sometimes asks us questions because he wants us to learn about him. He wants us to learn about him. And I'm going to take you now to the New Testament. When the Pharisees were asking Jesus this question. Like maybe you have today. He says on Matthew chapter 12. Verses 38 to 41, he says, Then some Pharisees told the teachers of the law and said to him, said to Jesus, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. They were challenging Jesus in a way they were thinking that they were challenging. Chose a sign. Chose something. How many times you say, God, show me a sign. Show me a way. Show me a path. Show me, Lord, in this situation. And Jesus answered, A wicked and adulterous generation asked for a sign. This is Nineveh. He's referring to Nineveh. But none will be given except the sign of the prophet Jonah. So God sent a messenger, Jonah. And Jesus saying, He was a messenger. 
Oh, Jesus. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Oh, Lord, forgive us, Lord. Oh, Lord, forgive us. And Jesus continued to say, the men of Nineveh will stand up on the judgment with this generation and condemn it. He's talking about the 120,000 people that bowed down back in Nineveh. Those will be on judgment day, George Jean, you and me together with God, because that's the word of God. That's what God is saying. And he said, they will be condemning. It says, let me repeat that. Verse 41. The men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with this generation condemning it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And now something greater than Jonah is here. Jesus. So Jesus is telling the Pharisees, I am here. And just like Jonah went to Nineveh to preach the word of God that was given upon him, I am Jesus Christ. And I'm going to be crucified for you and for me. And I'm going to resurrect in the grave for three days and three nights. In the same way, if you repent and come unto me, I will bring you up to heaven with me. That's what Jesus is telling us today. That's what Jesus is telling us today, my beloved. This is the moment to be obedient to God, to hear the word of God, to follow Jesus, the Messiah. Your Jesus, my Jesus. And to repent from our ways and to come. And I'm not telling you, oh, I repent today and that's it. He forgive me for all my sin. Yes, he does it. But I'm telling you, my sister and my brother, this walk, you will have to do it tomorrow and maybe tonight again. And it's, it's, it's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle of repentance because we are not from this world. We belong to the kingdom of God. And we are righteous in Jesus Christ, the God Almighty. And He is the way, and He is the light, and He is the truth. And He's telling you today, my daughter, my son, I love you and I created you just like I created everything upon this earth according to the book of Genesis. And I want to come and have a relationship with you. I want you to get to know who I am, that I am, that I am. And I will walk with you. But we are to acknowledge, we have to welcome him in our hearts. And I pray today that today will be a day that you will just bow down and worship him and pray but pray from the belly pray from where you came from you came from your mother's womb in water just like Jonah was in the belly of the fish and he prayed this beautiful prayer that you could read on chapter 2 and he repent and he pray with all his mighty and all God's power and the shalom was upon Jonah. The same way he will do with you and he will do with me. And he will do with every generation that will come after you. But you, you is the vessel. You are the one chosen. He wants you today. He wants you to say yes to him. And that's our prayer today. Thank you, Lord, 
for this day. Thank you for day 22. Thank you that we, in the moment of darkness, in a, in a city, in a land, in nations that are turning away from you, Father God, we know that there's a group of people that you have chosen, that there's a group of women and men, and there's an army that you're raising up for the glory of your kingdom and your kingdom only, Father God. And we pray this in your name, in Jesus Christ. And may you follow Jesus, the God Almighty, and that the Holy Spirit be upon you for the rest of your life and that you be blessed in a way that you will never imagine you will be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. I see you tomorrow. Keep praying, keep trusting in the Lord, and be obedient, and He will have mercy of you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Bye-bye.